Today we're going to be continuing our Solving Mathematics in Movies series and we're going to be focusing on the very famous film Good Will Hunting. We're going to be tackling the blackboard problem. Let's get stuck into it. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm a current Astrodynamics software engineer and I'm a Cambridge Mathematics graduate. And today we're going to be looking at the blackboard problem in the film Goodwill Hunting. So a bit of background behind this specific question. In the film, an MIT professor and his colleagues basically write this problem on the blackboard and say, this took us two over two years to prove can you do it? Addressing it to the students. And essentially in the film, that's what you see being solved uh, by the main character. And a bit of spoiler, it's not going to take us two years in this video. <laughs> this video is not going to be two years long. The proof itself is actually really, really simple. And without the maths, the concept behind it is a very simple problem. And honestly, I think anybody could do it. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. First of all, what is the question on the blackboard? So the question on the blackboard basically says, draw all homeo, let's see if I can spell this right morphically irreducible trees of size n equals 10. So this is the question that we're trying to solve and essentially you don't need to know too much other than what these fancy words mean. So what homeomorphically means, what irreducible means, and if you don't have a massive background in maths, what trees mean. So first of all trees, let's, let's discuss what trees are. So trees are kind of like a network of dots and lines. So this is a tree. Uh, let's do something a little bit like this. So this is a tree here that you see. So essentially what the problem wants you to do, and if you see in the picture, you can see that Will starts to draw kind of images looking like this. And this is what a tree is. So this is what is denoted by a tree. It's just essentially dots and lines that connect each other. Something that's not allowed in trees is they can't be cyclic. So what you can't have is you can't have a cycle in them. So if I was to draw a line here, this is not allowed. So it's worth noting that that's kind of a big thing to play in when it comes to uh, trees in mathematics. Now, irreducible. Irreducible is a fancy, fancy word, and all it means is that you can't have something like this in your tree. So what this means is you can't have a node like this one here. If I've, I forgot to mention, I'm not sure if I mentioned just previously, a node is a dot in one of these trees. So you can't have a node like this where you have two lines passing through because essentially this here is exactly the same as what we had before. You've just extended this line by a line and another node here. So that's something that you can't have and that plays a part in this question. Now homeomorphically, very very fancy word and all it means is essentially if I was to draw uh, another node and I drew it like this, let's have a think. So if I drew it like this, these two are essentially equivalent. All I've done here is this section here has kind of been rotated downwards to give you this section here. And then this section here has been rotated upwards to give you this section here. So these two trees are identical. And in this problem, you can't have two trees that are essentially equivalent. And this does come into play when we look into the mathematics behind it as well. Now, for those of you that have watched my channel before, you'll know that I am an applied mathematician. So you might be wondering, Ellie, where have you learned about homeomorphism and irreducibility for a pure maths problem when you are applied? Well, the answer to that is on a platform called brilliant.org. Now, Brilliant is essentially a platform where you can learn about technology, about science, about anything related to STEM, really. So there's lots of mathematics courses on there, lots of astrophysics courses. Although I'm an applied mathematician, I still really enjoy pure maths. And that's why I've used Brilliant, because I've been looking at their courses on graph theory, on number theory, and I've been learning a lot. And that's actually where the idea for this video came from because I remember learning about homeomorphism and thinking I recognise that from somewhere and it was actually from Goodwill Hunting. So that's the reason for today's video. Now on the topic of Brilliant, Brilliant have very kindly sponsored today's video and they're giving all of you that click in the link in the description and in the comment section free access to their full platform, everything that Brilliant has to offer for 30 days. And the first 200 of you that click on the link in the description will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So if you want to learn about things like homeomorphism or learn about something a little bit different to what you're currently studying, then check out Brilliant. It's honestly incredible. So back to the video. Okay, so now we know what the question's asking, we can start looking into the maths. Now something I just previously forgot to mention was we have to have trees that are size n equals 10. And all that means is you want 10 nodes, so you want 10 of these. 
Okay, cool. So let's start looking at how we can solve this mathematically. So we can look at this problem straight away and look at conditions like irreducibility and write some conditions for that mathematically. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a variable called nk and we're just going to let nk be the number of nodes all these can also be called vertices with degree k and all that means is a degree is the number of lines that are passing through a given node so one thing that we know already from irreducibility we know that this isn't allowed so we can't have a, a singular node that has two lines passing through it so again this is not allowed so that means that n2 we, we can't have n2 we're not allowed to have n2 so n2 essentially doesn't exist so let's write that so let n k be the number of nodes vertices with degree k so the first condition we have is that n2 must equal zero and that's just by the condition of irreducibility so by irreducibility and the other thing to mention is n k must also equal zero for k is greater than 9. And the reason for that is just the condition that we have here, which is that n must equal 10. So these are the two conditions we have. Now from this, what we can write is a little mathematical formula, and I'm going to write it out fully just so you understand that you can use summation to... What we can say from this is thus n1 plus n2 plus n3 equals 10. Um, and the reason for that is just because we have 10 uh, nodes. We want n equals 10. And I'm just going to put that and say that's because we want n equals 10. So if you if you add up each of the nodes that we have, then there must be 10 of them altogether. Okay, cool. So that's the first condition. Now the second condition is since we have n equals 10 nodes, we must therefore have n minus 1 edges. And we can write that in another way mathematically by the following. So what we can say is n minus 1, which is 9 edges. We can write n1 plus 2n2 plus 3n3 and so on all the way up okay so we have this condition and to mention before we know that n2 must equal zero so this must go to zero and this must also go to zero okay so we have these two equations here now what we can do with them is we can subtract them so if we just subtract then what we get out of this is 2n2 2 and 3, so should I say, because 2 and 2 is a goner. And we do the same all the way up until our final term. Okay, so we have this equation now, and we can look at this equation and we can kind of make some conclusions about it. So what we can start by doing is look at different cases. So if we start by saying let R, and R is just going to be the maximum number you can have as k where nk does not equal zero so what we're going to do is we're going to let r be the maximum value of k where nk does not equal zero and we're going to look through all of these different cases and hopefully draw some trees that will give us the solution so the first first one probably the easiest is if we look at when r is nine so when r equals nine what we have and what we know is that eight n nine must equal eight now, we can't add any of these extra terms on here. You know, if you had 2n3 plus 8n9 equals 8, that's obviously incorrect. So, we have automatically that 8n9 equals 8, which implies that n9 equals 1. And what that means is, we have one node that has n lines going through it. So, 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the first solution to the problem, and this is for when r equals nine. So this is when we have the maximum number of lines going through a given vertice or a node in this case. So this is the first. This is the first solution. Now what we can do is we can move on to r equals eight. This leaves us with the only possible. It's not actually possible. <laughs> the only essentially thing that we could write is this because we, we don't have anything that we can add on to here. So we end up having 7n, 8 equals 8, and therefore this is impossible, because we can't have a fractional node. So for the r equals 8 case, it's impossible. Let's move on to the r equals 7 case. 
the r equals 7 case is a little bit nicer. So in this case, if we do r equals 7, so we look at the n7 node, so we have 6n7 from here, and then the only thing that we can add to make 8 is 2n3. So that implies that n7 equals 1 and n3 equals 1 as well. And what that gives us is this graph here. So we have one node that has three lines from it. So that's this one here. This is the n3. Now this node here needs to have 7 because we have n7 equals 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's very poorly. It's not even 7. I need to remove 1. Don't need 7 because we already have this one here. So, so that is the second solution to this problem. Now, again, we move on to r equals 6. So for the r equals 6, we have, if we look, we have 5n6 plus, and in this case, we'll have 3n4 equals 8, which implies that n6 equals 1 and n4 must therefore equal 1, 2. Now, let's draw that somewhere on here. What I'm going to do is just make these a little bit smaller so I can fit all of them on the page. Now for this example, so we have one node that has six and we have one node that has four vertices going out of it. So that is, this one looks like this. So this one has the four uh, lines coming out of it and then this one here has six. So we have the third solution. Okay, so there we go, that is the r equals six. So we have a third solution. So now if we go to r equals five, Following the same kind of pattern, we can have n5 equals 1, n3 equals 2. But you can also have, if you do n, you can also have n5 equals 2 and n1 equals 8. And these two solutions here are essentially just from looking at the equation that we have here. So let's just call this star. So from equation star, we know that we can do n5 equals 1 because we have 4 there. And then if we add n3, which is this here, and we add two of them, then we get eight. So if you do n5 equals two here, you, you get the same output. You get two times four is, is eight. And then you can get the n1 equals eight by just looking at this equation here and substituting in the value of n5. Okay, cool. So for this problem, you can have two graphs and they're gonna look like this. So we have one here that's got three. The middle one has five and the end one has three. So this is a three, five, three graph. But you can also have a three, three, five. So this graph here is a three, three, five. So we can't have a five, three, three in this situation because of the condition of homeomorphism because those two graphs are essentially the same. So we've added another two solutions so with this, we have two, two nodes with five and we have eight nodes with one. So this is going to look something like this. So we have two nodes that have five and then the rest have one. Okay, cool. So here is a, another solution. R equals four condition. Now, if we follow what we were doing before and say that N4 equals one, what you find is that this is actually impossible. So if you look at where n4 is one here, we can't have another value, we can't have another node in there that makes that meets the condition that we have in the question, in the equation, sorry. So n equals four, e n4 equals one, that's impossible. But what we can do is we can have n4 equals two, and that makes n3 equals one. So we have a condition here for the r equals four, and that gives a, a graph that looks like this. This is a three, four, four graph, or we can have four, three, four graph. Okay, Whew, we're getting through now. Two more, we've done two more. Okay, cool. Now you'll be pleased to know we have one last, <laughs> one last condition, which is r equals three. So r equals three, if we do as we were doing before, we can't have an n, we've had n3 equals one somewhere up here. Um, yeah, here. So we've already uh, considered that case. So what we can do instead is we can have n3 equals four. And this will give you 
So you need four nodes with three going through. So you've got three there, three there, three there, and three there. Okay, and the next one you can have. So there we have it. Those are all of the nodes. Hang on, have we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Ten, perfect. Whew, gosh, that was <laughs> quite a lot of drawing. So now if you're ever watching Goodwill Hunting with any of your friends, you can turn to them and say, I can solve that question on the blackboard. The problem that took MIT professors over two years to prove. So that was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment, and I'll see you all in the next video.